Welcome along guys. Well I'm back out on the 690. If you haven't seen, I've got this bike as a long-term loan from KTM for the next eight months or so. So I'm going to be bringing you a full video diary of how I'm getting on with this machine. But as I'm still running it in, I thought what a great opportunity to actually talk about running in procedure. There's lots of different theories out on the internet as to which method you should take. Let's just talk you through one of my preferred ways of doing it. Let's go. Wow, spring is in the air today. Look at this. Absolutely lovely. But we're not here to talk about the spring and the flowers. We're here to talk about 690 SMCRs. Let's do it. So, so far this bike I've covered 175 miles of running it in. According to KTM, if you read the manual, it says you mustn't go above 15 miles an hour in first gear, you mustn't go above 30 miles an hour in second gear, you mustn't go above 40 miles an hour in fourth gear. <laughs> you get the point. Because this bike hasn't got a rev counter, it gives you what you should and shouldn't do. Let's go this way. What you shouldn't, shouldn't do based on the speed. My H2, and it says you should do that for 600 miles. My H2 said you had to do a thousand miles of running it in. Do not exceed 5,000 revs for the first 600 miles and then don't, ex cheeky, bloody hell mate, and then don't exceed uh, 7,000 RPM for the last 400 miles. Now if you look at the internet you'll see various ways of people suggesting how you should run your bikes in. The main one being the manufacturer's method of a slow easy break in. The second being what they call the hard braking method, whereby you start the bike, you warm it up, and then you ride it like you stole it, <laughs> basically. The idea behind that method is it provides a better seal of the piston rings against the barrels. Hence, over time, the bike will make perform better and give more power, and also it won't burn as much oil because that seal is, is tighter there's very little scientific evidence out there to actually help you make a decision of which approach to take. The best bit of science I've seen behind this was actually done by the Motorcycle Magazine in the States where they took two identical CB1000, CB500 motors and then run one in gently and the other one in the hard method and then took them all apart, examined them afterwards and saw and, and to, to check what tolerances the pistons were, to see what wear there was internally on the engines. That's the only bit of scientific research I've seen and I'll put a link, that's actually a video, I'll put a link to that video below, so take a look at that. Their conclusion was that on that engine they couldn't see any difference in wear or anything between the two methods of breaking that bike in, which is very interesting. The flaw with that, of course, is it's just a little CB500. It's not a high-performance motorcycle. Now, I know everyone has their own different methods of doing this, and I'm never going to please everyone, and no one's ever going to agree with me that my method is correct. People will swear by the hard braking. You can't please everyone with this subject, but my take of it is the hard running, it may give better short-term results, but what's it going to be like longer term when the, when the engine's got 10, 20,000 miles on it? And the fact you're not, it, it, the purpose of running a bike in isn't just to seal the piston rings to the barrels. You, you're running in the whole bike, you're bedding the tyres in, you're bedding the brakes in, you're wearing the gearbox in as well. By doing the hard braking, I think you're putting a lot of stress on the other bike components. I actually found a really interesting video um, where they're making the uh, S1000RR and they're saying that the tolerances on the piston and the barrel is like 3 microns which is Formula 1 tolerances. I'll, I'll put a link to the video but it's a fascinating video of how BMW make the S1000 90% in-house even from doing all the castings of the cylinder blocks everything and it's fascinating but what is really interesting and what I really wanted to see in this video is a lot of people will tell you, oh, the engines are running when you get them. When, when you buy the bike, the, the engines are bench run, so they're all basically running anyway. 
That isn't true. Watching that video, the engines are run up on the motor and they connect air connectors to the, to the barrels and they just measure the volumes of air going through. So they're not run, they're not, they, they call it dry running. So they're just being spun up by a motor just long enough to, to get them some readings that there's no air leaks and stuff. The only time they're run up is by the guy that just checks them all at the end. When the whole bike's assembled, they start it, they put it on a dyno and they just run it through the gears up and down the gearbox. And they're not particularly gentle. <laughs> that's another thing I know you noticed in the video. But that's it, the bikes are unrun in. I know modern tolerances, you know, there's, it's not like the olden days where the bikes, you know, you really did have to do the running because the actual machining of the barrels and the pistons, it wasn't that close and, you know, that had to be finished off on the road. I get it. It's not like that these days. And that's why I think you can get away with doing that hard running. But for me, that it doesn't quite sit right and I just prefer to be a little bit more gentle with the whole rest of the bike as well. And it gives a, and you, I think you've got a lot more peace of mind knowing that you've run a bike in like that. When it's all done, yeah, it's the first 600 miles are painful, but then when you look back, you can think, oh, that was done properly. I have faith <laughs> that I've done that correctly. I mean, things like the S1000RR, they have the electronic limiter. So the bike won't exceed 8,000 revs until it's had that first service. So they won't, the double R won't let you do a hard brake in. That's how convinced BMW are that they should be following a running procedure. They won't let the bike go over 8,000 revs when it's new. And that is an engine which is produced with tolerances up to three microns. Well, there we go. I'm not trying to preach at people and say how you should run your bike in. This is just, people have asked how I'm gonna do it with the new bikes I've had. You know, it's a question that comes up a lot. And it's a difficult one to answer. There's no right and wrong way, really. I think it's always best to follow the manufacturer's guidelines where you can. And that just gives you that extra peace of mind as well. But, you know, if you disagree with me, let me know your thoughts in the comments, guys. I know this will create some, some controversy, no doubt. But I think it's sensible to do... The, the hard braking method doesn't fit with me. And bikes which I have perhaps running a little bit harder than I should have. <laughs> Loners, per se. There has been some problems I've seen myself with oil leaks and stuff like that, which you don't seem to get if you bed it in nice and gently. But let me know your thoughts below. I'm always interested in how people have run their bikes in. If you've gone for the hard run in, did you experience any problems later down the line? If you went for the softly approach, again, did you experience any problems? Let's see what people think, it'll be really interesting. So let me know in the comments what approach you guys took with your new bikes and how you got on with it and how long you kept the bikes for and how many miles they've got on them now and if those miles are trouble free. Because that's the only way to be sure. There we go guys. I'll be out again on the 690. I'm going to do regular updates on this bike. The next one will probably be when it goes back for that first service. I'll try and whack out those 600 miles. I want to then also get the suspension set up on this, get the sag set up, because that's another important thing when you bought a new bike, setting up the suspension for your weight. So I'm going to do a video about that as well. But stick around, stay tuned, ride safe, and I'll speak to you soon. See you later, guys. This is power level one, which is full power. <laughs> I told you I was scared about that. Whoa! I've never dropped a bike before in my life. Whoa! <laughs> that's it. That's it. <laughs> Listen to this.